Hey, Radiant Life, it's Pastor Josh. I wanted to give you an update on our phasing, our phases to return back to what we would consider normal. So phase one, as we've talked about over the last few weeks, is life groups meeting on site at Radiant Life. These are small groups, groups of 10 or less to stay in compliance with the state guidelines. Phase two is home church, which is, you know, maybe thinking home church, what is that? Well, this is where as guidelines allow, so this is gonna require you, and we'll try to keep you guys posted, but as, as our government allows bigger groups to meet inside, we want to encourage you, get together with another family or a couple of families and get together on Sunday mornings or whatever day of the week works for you and watch our Sunday service together. So you're going to come together, you're going to, you're going to cultivate community, and, but you're going to do that in, in groups that are slightly larger than our, than our small groups here at church, our life groups, but we're not quite back to being full normal just yet. So be thinking, hmm, as guidelines allow, who is somebody or who is a family or who are a couple of families that I can invite into my home and start to have fellowship with? So maybe you guys make it a Sunday morning brunch and you watch service together. There is something awesome about getting together with other people and to use the, the, the biblical term, right, to break bread with other people. That's downright, that's downright biblical. So get together, eat some food, experience worship together, and maybe you spend some time in prayer with the families that you get together with. And we're excited for you to start to reconnect with people here in our community and in our church family. Now, as we're allowed to go back to an even more uh, normal type of service, we will keep you posted, but for now, Phase one, life groups here at Radiant Life. Phase two, start to invite families into your home and do life together. We will keep you updated. Thanks. Happy Father's Day. I love that you're kind. I love that you can build things. Uh, I love that you help me on my projects. Bye. Happy first Father's Day, David. And happy Father's Day, Papa. We love you both so much. Happy Father's Day! Happy Father's Day, Pops. Love you. Happy Father's Day! We love you, Dad. We love you. Happy Father's Day! Happy Father's Day! We appreciate everything you do for us. We love you. Happy Father's Day to all fathers, especially mine. Love you, Dad.
to grace when the heart is under fire. Another way when the walls are closing in. When I look at the space between where I used to be and this reckoning, I know I will never be another in the fire standing next to me there was another
Amen, church. There has been another in the fire with us throughout this crisis. He's been faithful to us. He has no beginning. He has no end. He's always been eternal, the God that we serve.
praise to him would you say I'll build my life I'll build my life upon your love Lord I will make sure that you are in the loop about. We've been talking for the last couple of weeks about life groups, and today is actually your last chance to sign up for life groups because they start tomorrow. Remember, this is phase one of our re-entry to normal. Right, so phase one, our life groups are gonna be meeting here on site at Radiant Life. You still have time, like as soon as this service is done, Follow the link that you're going to see below. It's going to be in the comments on Facebook, on YouTube, on our live platform. Use that link to get signed up for a group. Get connected and be part of phase one of our return to normal. Speaking of getting back to things, what else is going on, Rasika? Hey, well, women, there's an awesome opportunity for you to gather together in community and dance it out. Josh, do you like dancing? I mean, I'm a, I'm a pretty excellent dancer. No. I'm sorry. Just keep those moves at home. But uh, women, if you love to dance or, hey, maybe you just want to get involved with some ladies here at church and community, uh, come out on Mondays at 630. The Radiant Women's Dance Fitness Team will be here in the parking lot. And if you're a little worried about being close, that's okay because we are going to socially distance dance together. So we hope to see you out there. It's a blast. You're going to get a great workout in and uh, meet some other amazing women throughout the church. And the beauty of social distancing while you're dancing is if you're like a terrible dancer and you're tripping and stumbling all over the place, social distancing, you're not gonna knock anybody else over. Exactly, but hey, if you're not a dancer like me, I'm not a dancer, 
Uh, we also have another way for encouragement throughout the week, and that's called Worship Wednesdays. And you'll find Worship Wednesdays on Facebook, on our Facebook page, yeah, yeah. Uh, at 6 o'clock. We want you to join. We're going to have JB leading some worship music along with uh, maybe some team members from the worship team. So we hope to see you there just to come in and get some encouragement throughout the week. Absolutely. Well, hey, lastly, before we jump into this week's episode in our SWAT series, I want to talk for just a minute about giving. But during COVID-19, there's been a lot of uncertainty, and we've seen a lot of us continue to put God first in the area of our finances. I want to encourage all of us as we get back to a little bit more of normal life. Let's not lose that rhythm. Let's continue to put God first in our finances. God allows us to partner with Him, to be part of what He is doing in our community. And one of the ways that we do that is through our giving financially. So we have multiple ways to give here at Radiant Life. You can go to our online giving platform. You can go to the radiantlife.church slash give. You'll also see links down below and in the comments. You can give via snail mail. You can send that check to 907 North Nottawa here in Sturgis, Michigan. Or you can text to give. There's a number that's going to show up on your screen, like probably right now if it isn't already there. And you can use that number to text in to give. It's, if it's the first time, just type the word give to that number. And then after that, you just enter whatever amount you want to give. Hit send. You're good to go. And by the way, I forgot. If you are visiting with us here online, Radiant Life for the first time, we're going to put a link right now in the comments. We would love to connect with you. Just say, hey, how's it going? How did you come across Radiant Life? We just want to connect with you give you any information you might need, answer any questions you have, and go from there. But for now, get ready. It's our next installment in our Spiritual Warfare and Tactics series. All day, every day, an invisible war rages around you. A cunning devilish enemy seeks to wreak havoc on everything that matters. your mind and emotions, your family, your future. But his reign stops here, right now, with you. Well, good morning, church, and I just want to get a huge shout out to you, praise team. You guys are awesome, well done, and I hope that, that I just felt the presence of the Lord as we were singing, and I hope that really resonates at home. Uh, my name's Ryan, I'm the lead pastor here at Rainy Life. Welcome to part three, or episode three, of our t summer teaching series titled SWAT, Spiritual Warfare, and Tactics, and this is a summer-long series. We'll be in it in June and July. Um, but there's reality. The reality is, if you're a follower of Jesus, you have a big target on your back. There's an enemy of your soul that wants to absolutely to kill you, destroy you, to just to completely get you out of God's plan and purpose for your life. And we've been in the book of Ephesians, chapter six, and I'm not going to go over the whole mess, uh, the whole uh, verses that we have been. Uh, it's Ephesians chapter six, ten through eighteen. But I want to get you caught up real. quick. Quick. And uh, Paul is writing this under arrest. He's been under arrest for about two years, and he sees a Roman soldier every single day in gear, and he's writing to the church in Ephesus, those mature believers of Jesus, saying, hey, wake up, church, because there's a spiritual reality happening all around us. And this is what he says in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12, for our struggle is not... It's not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the, the spiritual forces of evil in the he heavenly realms. In other words, Paul's just kind of reminding us, hey, the devil's real. He has this spiritual realm that is absolutely evil. He's got his little minions called demons, and they're out to destroy you. And what we're trying to do in this series is wake us up to the reality that this is real. And Paul's reminding us that we got to suit up on armor because the devil's real and he's after your thinking, he's after your emotions, he's after your family, he's after your kids, he's out there to destroy your God-given purpose of why you were ever born in the first place. And we got to wake up to this reality. And I don't know about you, but you look at this and realize that our, our struggle is not against each other. It's not against skin color, it's not against different ethnicities, it's not against marriages and spouses and with our kids. There's something else at play and it's spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. That's where it is. 
And I know I can look at this, and maybe you're like me, and I look at this and say, I feel almost overwhelmed and ill-equipped, right? Like, the only weapon I have right now, it feels like I'm being being beat up all the time, is maybe like a spitball. That's it. It's not going to be very effective. But I want you, before we jump in, I need to remind you this morning, if you follow Jesus, that in Romans chapter 8, verse 11, it reads this way, the Spirit of God, it's the Holy Spirit part of the Trinity, you have God the Father, Jesus Christ the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the presence of God, the Spirit of God, who raised Jesus from the dead. Can we read these three words out loud together? Are you ready? Lives in you. The same power that rose Jesus from the grave is inside of you. It's there. It's called the Holy Spirit. And you have to understand going into battle, you have power and authority because the Holy Spirit lives inside of you. And remember, the devil has limited power. He does have some, but it's limited. But the devil has no authority. If the authority lies in Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit lives in you, you walk around with power and authority in your life. Now, maybe for some of us, you're like, I, but I'm, I, I still don't feel confident. I don't have boldness. That's what this series is trying to get us into. That if we live into this stuff, that we can walk around with confidence and boldness in life and with power and authority. That's what I want for all of us. And so uh, we're gonna jump into some of the pieces that Paul gives us. And last week we looked at the first piece in Ephesians chapter eight, verse 13. It reads this way. Therefore, put on the full armor of God. So God gives us armor to put on to fight these evil, spiritual evil forces that are there. So that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything, to stand. In other words, Paul's writing and saying, hey, I don't want you guys to fall down as followers of Jesus. Don't fall down. I want you to put on this full armor of God. It's his armor for you. Put it on so you can stand. And then he's going to give us a list based on the look of that Roman soldier that he's seen every day under arrest of how they put on their gear, and he gives us the gear. And here it is in verse 14. Stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place. And last week, if you watched it all, we, we kind of talked about the belt of truth. And there's a reason why the belt of truth is first, because it's the core support. It holds every piece of armor in play. The 70 pounds of armor, the belt, of, the belt holds everything in play. And if you missed it, jump online at theradiantlife.church. Go to our media page, and you can get caught up that way. But the today, the second piece of armor, because Paul's telling us this is the order that they put it on, the Roman soldier. So we're going to go in order to understand the importance there. But today, what we're going to do is focus on the breastplate of righteousness. And let me give you um, a, quick, a quick thing into the breastplate. I believe this is the most unused piece of God's armor if you follow Jesus. I think this is the most neglected piece. There's six pieces I'm wrapping up the series with seven because I think there's seven and we missed the seventh. I think this is the most unused piece, but I think this is the spiritual breakthrough piece of armor in the entire armor of God is this piece. And we'll get into that. But let me tell you a little bit about the breastplate so we can understand what Paul sees in a Roman soldier. This breastplate would be made out of nickel or bronze. This was the heaviest piece of equipment that a Roman soldier would put on. It weighed about 40 pounds. Uh, here's in comparison. Goliath's bl- uh, breastplate. Goliath, you know, like little David and Goliath, and David in the slingshot nails the giant Goliath. We we're told in Scripture that Goliath's breastplate weighed 125 pounds. And a normal Roman soldier's breastplate here, the plate that protected everything, was 40 pounds. Um, If you were extra wealthy as a soldier, you were able, this is standard issue, by the way, in the Roman uh, soldiers, uh, you would get this from Caesar. Caesar, And then uh, if you were wealthy, you could buy chain mail to go underneath it so you have extra protection only for the wealthy who can afford it. And so now you have chain mail you have this plate that covers your vital organs, your heart and your guts. 
In, in fact, in the ancient world, they believed those are the two most important things to protect your heart and your guts. And in fact, what's interesting is, wouldn't you walk around with more confidence if you were in battle knowing you had this on, that at least my heart's protected, right? If, imagine if you didn't, I don't know about you, but if I didn't have this on, I would be honest, I'm, I'm a coward. I don't like fighting anyways. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm all about peace and not violence anyways. I'm, I'm the coward hiding like, hey, you guys go ahead. I'm, I'm back here, okay? But if I have it on, I have a little more boldness and confidence, knowing at least my vital organs are protected. I've got something, I've got a plate there that is protecting all of that. And I think, by the end of this message, if we understand what this means, the breastplate of righteousness, we will act with confidence as followers of Jesus in ways we've never acted before. I truly believe it. I think this piece for many is a spiritual breakthrough waiting to happen. Now, I think many of us are walking around with the question, and we'll get into righteousness. This is a really churchy word, and some of you watching right now, you're like, I don't even know what that word means. We'll we'll get to that. But I think for many of us, you may be walking around literally in your mind questioning, do I really have confidence in Jesus? Am I truly forgiven? Can God really love me? And I think for many of us, In the Christian church across the globe, this results in weak churches, weak followers of Jesus, and we walk around very timid in our life. And we're not bold. I think this is your spiritual breakthrough piece, the breastplate of righteousness. Because here's what you and I understand. You and I understand this psalm. Psalm 143 reads this way. Lord, hear my prayer. Listen to my cry for mercy. In your faithfulness and righteousness, Come to my relief. Do not bring your servant into judgment for, watch this, no one is living righteous before you. We get that. We realize, you know what, God, we've messed up. We've sinned. We are not. There's no one living and righteous before you. Like, you are holy. You are perfect. We are all sinners down here. We've got, we carry shame. We carry guilt. We carry things. We understand that. Here's what also we understand in Romans chapter 3, verse 10. There is no one righteous, not even one. We're sinful. We fall short. We live in a broken, sinful world, and we fall short of the glory of God, which is that next verse. It says this, for all, for who? All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We know this. We fall short. We know exactly what we did last night. We know what we did a week ago. We realize in our own walk, yes, I've sinned and I fall short, but I love context because Romans 3, 23, we give this and we understand our own unrighteousness. Like, I'm just, I'm not right. I'm not in right living with God. I understand that. But don't stop at verse 23. I think you have to have verse 24 with 23. If you ever tell someone this verse, please tell them the immediate verse that follows. Romans 3, 24 says this. And how many? All are justified freely by his grace through redemption that came by Jesus Christ. This is why you have to have both. You have to realize, hey, guess what? We've all sinned and fallen short. We've all made mistakes. We're all sinners. But yet, we all are justified freely by his grace through redemption that came by Jesus Christ. What is this word justify? I'm throwing out a bunch of churchy words this morning, all right? We have righteousness, we have justified, we'll get into all that. In fact, when I was finishing up my seminary, uh, my master's degree in seminary, I had to write a huge paper on this word justified and justification, and it was fantastically boring, okay? So I'm gonna try to give us in the most contemporary, understandable way. But this idea, the general idea of we're justified freely, this word justified means basically we're made right before God. We're just made. It's, it's very similar to righteous, but we'll, we'll unpack that. But it's that idea. In other words, that before we've entered in relationship with Jesus, we had no breastplate on. We had no righteousness. But as soon as you and I gave our heart to Jesus Christ, everything good about Jesus was placed on us, and everything bad about us was then put on Jesus Christ, that we can stand before God confidently, made new, 
And I just don't, I don't think this is where we're, this is where we trip up as followers of Jesus. We don't fully understand that we are walking in righteousness. We're walking in righteousness. You know why we don't fully understand that? Because we all sit there and go, I sinned and I'm falling short. And we don't finish it. We don't realize, yes, you've sinned. Yes, you've fallen short. Yes, you have. But you're also justified before the throne of God because of what Jesus Christ did for you and for me. In fact, if you don't, still don't believe me, I'll throw another verse at you. 2 Corinthians 5.21. God made him who had no sin, referring to Jesus, to be sin for us so that in him we might become uh, the righteousness of God. The righteousness of God. Why can we become the righteousness of God? Because of Jesus Christ. So now to define righteous. Okay, Ryan, what in the world is righteousness? Righteousness. Here's a couple. I combined two definitions together. Righteousness is this. It's living straight or upright, excuse me, upright living or right standing before God. And I know some of you are sitting there going, "Uh uh-oh, that's not me. That's not me. I'm a sinner. And Ryan, if you really knew what I did last night, um, this is not me. It's just not. I want you to know that this peace When you go to battle and the enemy of your soul wants to get inside of you, listen to me, you're standing right before God. When the devil wants to remind you of everything you've ever done in life, it's the breastplate of righteousness. And I know for some, you know how I I memorize justified in seminary this way. Justified, it's an easy way. Um, Here's how I remembered it. Just as if I never sinned. I'm justified. Just if I never sinned. It's justified. And I know again, but Ryan, I know I sinned. The surprise, I, I know. How many of us know that when God forgives us, he doesn't erase our memories? We remember them, right? So I'm going to ask my first volunteer, will you come up on stage real quickly? Since you were my volunteer last week, you, you get to be tribute once again. Oh, good. Does that mean I get two gift cards like Frank Fulton? Um, <laughs> uh, gift cards, we'll talk later. All right. Um, I think for many of us, we realize, I remember what I did last night. I remember my past. I remember my shame and my guilt. And maybe perhaps you and I, we wear something... We just feel dirty. We feel like our life is just a mess. And you hear a message about this righteousness and you're like, are you serious? Do you have any idea? I cannot made right before God. Look at all of this that has happened in my life. I'm messy, I'm dirty, there's chaos, there's brokenness. I am filthy in life. I'm filthy. But remember last week, Last week was the belt of truth. Understanding that the core support, which was here, right there, understanding the core support, if we truly believe that we gotta put on the core support every single day, it's the first piece, then we have to believe that we are made right. Second prop, come on stage. That is why, check this out, that is why you put on the belt of truth first. Because the belt of truth reminds us You're clean and you look like this before God now because of what Jesus Christ did for you. You're not this. Watch how this plays now. You don't put on the belt of truth first. What do you look like? Probably you feel like this more now. Uh, I'm screw up. I'm everything that's wrong in life. Because I got my marriage wrong. My finances are crazy. Ah, man, it's God, God. Only God knows what I did a year ago. And I'm not proud of it. 
But the belt of truth reminds us we don't have to have a breastplate, a plate that looks like this. And before, listen to this. This is not the way, if you follow Jesus, this is not the way God sees you. You may see yourself this way, but because of the righteousness that we are made before God, this is the way God sees you. And Paul's reminding there's an enemy of your soul that wants you to think of all this. But Paul says, no, put on the breastplate of righteousness so you can look like this. Now stay here real quick. What's interesting in the ancient world, I'm, I'm literally wrapping this up real quick. In the ancient world, everything I told you had to do with their heart and their guts. Heart and guts, heart and guts. Here's what the proverb said, and you may know this. Guard your heart above all else, for it's the source of life. Here's how, what the, in the ancient world in the first century, this is what they believed about the heart. That the fart, the, the fart, that is weird. That is really weird. I did not fart when I said that, but we're going on. When, that is really weird. Okay. The heart, <laughs> that's a whole nother armor of God piece that we won't talk about, all right? When the heart, that's there, because remember, Proverbs says, the source of life is right here. They believe four things about the heart. Number one, your mind was connected to the heart. Remember, they did not have great anatomy in uh, the first century world. I mean, they, they had good anatomy, but just they didn't know the knowledge of anatomy. They didn't understand that connection, that dude, your mind's here. So they believed your heart was your source of your mind, which is all your thinking and your thoughts. The second thing is that your heart was connected to your will, which was your desires in life. They believe the third thing was your heart was connected to your emotions of how you feel and everything. And the fourth is your heart was connected to your conscious, which literally was everything that was driving you in life. Everything that's there. So they believed. Paul's sitting there going, hey, I got it. Where does the enemy of your soul want to attack you in your thinking? Wants to get you to start thinking crazy things. Start thinking, am I really saved? Am I really saved? Does God really love me? I'm a screw up. I look like this. You look like the shirt, not like Dave Taylor. You look like the shirt. He's not a screw up. But that's what the devil wants you to believe. He wants to attack your will. Hey, go with your flesh desires, not your spirit desires, by the way. Paul says, no. Breastplate of righteousness, we gotta cover that. We gotta, we gotta keep that clean. Go with your emotions, let your feelings just lead you. No, feelings lie, they come like waves, they crash, they go, they're crazy sometimes. And Paul says, breastplate of righteousness, plate up your heart and your guts with righteousness. Look like, remember, this is what you look like, not like this. And you're conscious, go ahead. Well, no wonder why Paul said it's the breastplate of righteousness and he didn't say the helmet of righteousness. He said, no, I need to protect your heart and your guts. And it's gotta be grounded in truth that you and I are made perfect in Jesus Christ. You may not feel it, but you are. And this is where I think the spiritual breakthrough happens. You guys can take a seat. Thank you so much. I don't wanna keep you. And as I wrap up, when we begin to put up and gird up truth, when we begin to put on the breastplate of righteousness, two things happens. Your prayers will be different. Your prayers will. Because if you are walking in unrighteousness the way you feel dirty like that, you'll pray timid prayers. God, if you really love me, I'm sorry for what I did. I did all this bad stuff and screw up in here and there. No, you'll live into Hebrews chapter four. It says, let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence. You'll put on righteousness and say, bring it on. God, I'm gonna look for miracles. I'm gonna, you're gonna move. And the second thing it's gonna do is outside of your prayers will be different is you will step out boldly. Think about this. Peter who was the leader of the 12 disciples, the 12 closest people to Jesus, screwed up three times, denied Jesus right before his crucifixion. I wonder if the enemy went after his mind and his will and his emotions at that moment. The enemy was attacking him there. I'm sure he was. But then Jesus... <laughs> 
What we say is he reinstated Peter on the shore of the Sea of Galilee. And then all of a sudden a huge event happens in the book of Acts. It's called Pentecost when the Holy Spirit came down on people. And guess who was the guest speaker? Peter. Peter. Guess who was the guest speaker that begins to call out the people who persecuted and crucified Jesus? It's Peter. And he realized something. When you put on the breastplate of righteousness, you, you're new. You don't have to look dirty and gross. You have to begin to put on the plate of righteousness to guard your heart, to guard your mind, and know I'm made new. And I can approach God's throne of grace with confidence. That I can go into this job interview with confidence. Because what the Roman soldiers did before battles, they would shine their breastplate up. They would make that plate look nice and shiny. And that way the opposing army would know I'm coming when that sun glistens off their plate. And you can go into that interview with the breastplate of righteousness. You may have screwed up your other job and the devil's trying to remind you of that. But you put on the plate of righteousness and you walk into that interview all shiny and saying, I'm, look, at the, I'm a follower of Jesus and I'm proud of it because I don't want to mirror up or mar up and dirty my breastplate of righteousness. And you can go into that dating relationship saying, I will not compromise my morals and values. You will not get my plate of righteousness dirty. No, because I'm made new. And so church, we ended the last time by saying, gird up. I'm gonna end this time if I find my clicker by reminding you and I to plate up. Put on the belt of truth. Understand you're made righteous. And then plate up with the plate of righteousness. Knowing you're not your past. You're not your mess. You're not your mistakes. You are made new in Jesus Christ. And you can stand before God in his throne room and say, I'm made new. Thank you, Jesus. Protect your mind. Protect your heart. We're going to close this morning with a special song. And ladies, you can grab the screen now. I'm gonna read you some of the lyrics. Because I think the key to all this was that breastplate of righteousness. I, I feel the Lord's, I, I need to tell you this. You're not a mistake. Listen, you're not an addict. You're a son of the Most High God that is now clothed in righteousness. You are a cherished daughter of the Most High God that's clothed in righteousness. What would it look like for us to be so confident in who we are and our identity in Jesus Christ that we walk around in confidence and boldness, changing this world from Him, even though the enemy wants to remind you over and over your mistakes, what you did, you're not that good. Just, just, just don't, don't, just don't co go to church, but here and there, don't sing, stay away. Uh, don't volunteer anywhere. Like, you, you remember what you did last night? Those spiritual gifts, forget it. No, I'm clothed in righteousness. The way God sees me is he doesn't see the dirt and the dinge. He sees Jesus when he sees you. So this song is a blessing. And it's called, well, it's called the blessing. And it says this, the Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. I pray that as we put on the plate of righteousness that we would plate up knowing that God's face is shining upon you. And then it ends, may his favor be upon you.
plate up with the breastplate of righteousness. I have the favor of God on me. No matter what the devil is trying to remind me of, the favor of God is on me. And a thousand generations in your family, your children, and their children, and their children. May we pass on. May our kids and our grandkids and our nieces and nephews see that we wear the breastplate of righteousness in our life. And it says, may his presence go before you and behind you and beside you all around you and within you. He is with you. He is with you because he loves you. You are made new in Jesus. So may this be immense blessing to you as we close our service.
there's someone watching this that needs to know he's for you and you don't feel it. And this is for you. The attack of the enemy is after you. And you don't think in this moment, I can't sing those lyrics because he's not for me. In the name of Jesus, just start believing that. Just cry out wherever you are. If you are moved in this moment, he is for me. Declare that promise over your spirit right now. He's for you. He is for you. The plate of righteousness is on you. You're clothed. You're made right now before God. God loves you and he's for you. Believe it. Preach it to yourself. Say it right now. Declare it over the enemy's lies that you have believed far too long. He is for you. He's for you. Believe it. Shout it. Say it. Whatever you got to do right now to silence the enemy of your soul. In the name of Jesus, let's believe it deep down. Holy Spirit, just move in homes right now. The most important piece, I think, is this breastplate of righteousness. We are made new, Jesus. It is in you, and we cast out every lie of the enemy, anything that is sunk into our heart, that we are made new in Jesus Christ. We're made new. You are for us, God. We believe that. We will walk our lives in faith, in confidence, in boldness because of what you did, Jesus Christ. What you did, Jesus, on the cross for us, God. Let's church, let's stand, let's keep singing, and let's silence the enemy. church. <laughs> Isn't that great to be in his presence, spending time with him, singing blessings over one another. You know, that's what God says we're supposed to do, sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs over each other. This is part of the purpose of meeting together as a, as a church. Come back next week, Sunday, 10 a.m. God bless you. Hey, it's our prayer this week that you are blessed and we hope that you enjoyed the message from Pastor Ryan. And don't forget to play it up. Cool. <laughs> <laughs>